Hello and a very warm welcome to The Real Talk. How are you doing and how was your week? Thank you so much for sparing time for yet another conversation that I have no doubt will build your spirit. Our guest today is a playwright, mm -hmm. a director, mm -hmm. and the founder of Mashirika Arts Performing Media. You will, it's, Mashirika is a whole outfit. Mm -hmm. You'll get to hear more about it. This is a lady that wears many hats. She has worn herself lots of accolades, and I cannot wait for her to share her story with us. My name is Jackie Lumbasi. We're live on Rwanda TV, the YouTube channel. Please share the link so that your friends and family and every other person catches this story as it's airing. We're coming live from Mythos Boutique Hotel. Hello and welcome to the show. Let's make use of the hashtag, The Real Talk, so we have as many people as possible talking about the show. Hope Azeda, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me and accepting me in your space. It is such a pleasure to see you after a long while. I know. <laughs> me too, likewise. I mean, it's been a while. I mean, your energy is contagious. Same, same. <laughs> yeah. same as yours, you know? We thank God for yeah, that. Absolutely. It's God's grace. It's, it's God's, God's grace. grace. Yes. Absolutely, yeah hope for somebody who is seeing you for the first time, but mm -hmm. maybe they've heard about Mashirika and maybe they've heard mm -hmm. of the work that you have done. Mm -hmm. I want us to start this conversation by going back mm -hmm. where your life started. Where were you born? What kind of childhood did you have? Were you always as bubbly, as beautiful and cheerful as you are today? Yeah, my childhood was really good. It was, was good because I was born in a family of 11. And I'm um, the 10th born, so you can imagine being the 10th born, no one really cares about what you're doing. You're playing, you're doing your dolls. I, was make, I loved doing uh, fiber dolls mm. and making clothes for my babies. Mm. And, you know, uh, also one thing I really loved, I used to love was uh, my mother was a nursing midwife. Mm -hmm. And she used to bake for us a good cake on Christmas Day. So after that, I would take all her empty tins from her, her pharmacy and then I would make cake with firewood. With, it was really beautiful. Interesting. And uh, we grew up in a very humble village, w way in the western part of Uganda. And that's where I could speak uh, the language from there. I would play games from there. I had friends from there. But later on, I had to move to uh, Kampala to start my, to continue with my primary education. I think I moved when I was in primary five. But everything else was in this part of Uganda, of, of village. village called Rukoni trading center but my mother again had lived before in a refugee camp mm -hmm. in a place called Shunjerezi but then there I was very young I didn't really grasp so much but what I really loved about the whole experience was I used to move with her whenever she went she would take us oh. with my other young brother or just the two of you the yeah the, two, the rest had to go look for other things firewood make food or do the hustles <laughs> of refugee camps so oh, I enjoyed yeah. you know just moving around with her mom to different uh, hospitals wherever she wanted to help people mm -hmm. so that was really my childhood and uh, the other thing that was really beautiful about it that I remember mm -hmm. was that wherever we stayed there was always a church and wherever there was a church they used to drum for people to come and pray mm -hmm. so I used to go to this church to, to sing with the choir even if I was really young so just singing in these local churches um, uh, playing around these drums that were always hanging around and just hitting them even if it's not the right time to call people mm -hmm. My childhood was really cool. It was like that. I didn't I stress. I didn't know I was a refugee. My mom really hid this from us. And she, she already said to my... To you, yeah. you were just living a normal life. I was just life. living a normal life. And uh, regardless of all the challenges, they, they used to be like certain times when they would have to like uh, shift. Sometimes when they would really harass Rwandans. Mm -hmm. And they would shift to another place, to another place. But for me, again, that was very exciting. Because that means I would meet new friends. I would eat at weird hours. We would, you know, eat other people's food like we were just like moving from there to, and for me it was really exciting but for them it was stressful but I just remember that neighborhood where they never ever transmitted the pain the weight the, the, I didn't know what was going on mm. for me I was always looking for the beautiful things out of this situation of migrating from a village to village you know working for uh, looking searching for safety yeah. and every time we landed somewhere in a new village yeah. They would, you know, slaughter goat and they, they maybe at 4 p.m. Who eats lunch at 4 p.m.? Is that yeah. dinner or breakfast? But yeah. it was just exciting. Yeah. And have, we go to fetch water at a new well. It was nice. You loved it. I and going to that new well also meant meeting new, new friends. friends. Yeah, I really met new friends. And an innocent friends. child. Yeah, really that was that's really exciting. That's all you need. You need to meet new nice friends. You play. You, That's it. Yeah. 
At what point did mm -hmm. you learn that part of this mm -hmm. stage of yours yeah. was being spent in a refugee camp? Like, did, now, was there a time when mom sat you down and opened up about where she was born, what was happening in her country, and how she ended up living in a refugee camp, and why you were now living under those conditions? Actually, it's very interesting that she never told us this truth. Like me, she never like sat down and told us this truth. Uh, we just grew up thinking we are no more Ugandans, and that's it. And uh, because I think it was also a technique for her to just not pass the past on us, and uh, she constantly reminded us that our mission on earth was just to plant seeds of love. We, she taught us to forgive uh, and, and peace and comfort. So I knew that was my mission. She did that. Huh? Yeah, she did that. But at one point, I would see, uh, like around 5 p.m., my father would be listening to like uh, Radio Deutsche Vera or German Radio in, in Swahili, mm -hmm. and I would hear him s listening to stories in, in, in about Rwanda, and I was always really didn't understand why. Why is he interested? And 5 p.m. was 5 p.m. You don't make a noise around him playing your balls or your door. No, no, no. He's listening to news. And sometimes you'd see that the, whatever he's listening is not bringing a good face on, a good face. And you know how children can absorb things and just keep quiet. So sometimes he would like, you know, shake his, or try to, you know, make a comment. But it was not really like he wanted us to see it. It was just mm -hmm. like having a co an inner conversation that he did not want to tell us. Yeah. 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 So for me, at the, po the time I really learned that I was a refugee, it was around the 1990s when people started saying, mm -hmm. you're a refugee, why are and you And maybe they started calling you Rwandan. A Rwandan, I'm like, okay, yeah. so I'm a re you go back to your mother, say, tell me about this, and, but you know, don't mm. just ignore her. Yeah. And also the names our dad gave us, we're not even Rwandan names, yeah. just Azeda is, what is Azeda? Mm. He was just, you know, giving us these names that we are more or less like protected. As if he was trying to protect you exactly. from something. Exactly, it was yeah. like a shield. Yeah, I was the last one, so he named me Zed. So for a long time, my name was Zed. Mm -hmm. And because there was pressure of like, so your name is Hope Zed? Is that Zed? Is that is a, name? a name? And uh, I had to uh, my, uh, pronounce it. Uh, and he added A because mm -hmm. he had gotten boy after me. Because at, for a long time, we thought I was going to be the last born. But I, I didn't become the last born. There so was he, a surprise. Yeah, he gave a birth to another boy he, whom he named Bahati. Wow. Luck. Wow. So he said, I started and I have finished. And that's how AZ came. Amazing. So yeah. being in the western part of the country, AZ became Azeda. Because <laughs> Z is like Zeda. <laughs> Zeda, Azeda, <laughs> Azeda. People say just Z, Z. No, whatever. I want people to pronounce else. it the way they wanted. So I was up as And that's mm -hmm. when, so you can see, we, I didn't really go into that world. I'm a refugee. Mm. I'm like this. I'm like this. No, it was... She, she protected us. She, wall, she built a wall of protection around us. I think and she wanted you to experience life yeah, in exactly, your own yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. She wanted yeah. us to just be children. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. So then you went to high school. Yeah. How was your secondary school time? Then uh, what did you want to grow, rather, to become when it's, you eventually uh, it, grown? It's, it's crazy how our scripts, our destinies are shaped, the way God writes our scripts if we really pay attention because at this point I, mean, I didn't know that I was going to be where I am today. I just followed the faith of a child and followed what my heart wanted to do and remember I'm, the, I'm like the tenth born, no one cares whether I'm learning this or doing this. But for some reason a brother of my, I, I was taken to Mengo Primary in Kampala and uh, it was, a, uh, it was a, a, um, a protestant school. So there I was more of like a um, girl scout doing these things. But again, when it came to joining secondary school, uh, I was taken to do an interview at the National Theater in this school called Namasagali College. Why? I've never even, I had never even heard of that school. I found myself seated in front of a Catholic British priest doing an interview. And uh, it was an expensive school. Of course, my, my parents wouldn't afford this school, but by now my brother Paul, Semana had finished his, his, his university and was working, and he said, I'm going to pay for her. Mm -hmm. So I went to a very privileged school for Thanks very, to your exactly. So, you know, God bless him for what he did. So I find myself in this school completely a new other dimension, another new environment, whereby they push you to do more talent things. It was known for that. Namasa Gali yeah, was yeah, for a long yeah. time known for yeah, that. And, and what was the, num the name of that man? Uh, Father Grimes. Father Grimes. Yeah. He made us who we are today. Most of the students from this school are something somewhere. Because Nobody of that is man. a waste. Nobody I is agree. a waste. Because he, he was good at, you know, 
and earthing talents out of people. How and did yours come out? So you go to this school, yeah. it's a new environment. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about that. It started with fire the, that is it, it, up. it started with the national anthem, with, with the school anthem. We used to sing every day at nine a.m. before we drink the porridge for breakfast, and it started. And there was just this main line that said, "We will grace our lives with arts and skills." And as you know, what our mouth pronounces or what our mouth it becomes who we are. Yes. So that was the school. You had to do something, or you get arrested for doing nothing. My yes, the lack of community participation. So by 5 p.m., you're supposed to be doing sports. You're supposed to be swimming. Either you're doing chess, or you're running, or you're Just dancing, or something. you're singing. But do something. Go do football. Do whatever. So as we started going, I started looking for my area. Where am I comfortable? I went in swimming. I was like, ah, uh -huh. yeah. I'm not used to swimming with boys in the swimming pool because I was used to. I was coming from another conservative <laughs> school, and yeah, I yeah, am yeah. dressed in a whatever swimsuit with. Boy, but like, is there a session for boys and a session for girls? <laughs> no. Here is a mixed school. So they used to, mm. they, if you had that kind of attitude, they would arrest you for um, segregation. Uh, lack of social something. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. There was something, lack of social participation or something. So yeah. it was, so you had to be social. Yes. You had to really forget about boys. And boys, <laughs> so I had to get to, <laughs> yeah. to, to swim. Let me get used to the boys. Yeah. I had to swim with them. Yeah, so every time I went to swimming, the swimming, the chlorine gave me flu. So I, I, I left that. But mm. again, I was really intrigued by the creative dance, the ballet. So mm. every 6 a.m. and 5 p.m. 6 a.m. we on the cold floor trying to learn ballet. So I started, yeah. I didn't know I had a dance, there was a dancer in me. I knew I used to dance other traditional dances, but then they started building this confidence in us. And, but of course, you're too old again for pure yeah. ballet. So it, it ended up being creative dance. Yeah. So I became a creative dancer for six years. Wow. They, I became so good that I also <laughs> didn't know what I was doing, but I just like, let me, whatever, whatever they tell me my hand to go, I will go. I'll go. So that's how I really started becoming the artist I am today. And also, this school also had something really special. Once you mm -hmm. checked in, first day, they gave you six poems. And at the end of the term, uh, they would pick a one poem of the six poems randomly. You would have to go and recite that poem in front so of six people. So to memorize. To six memorize. Like memorize. you check in, they give you everything, you paid your school fees, or here are your poems. And they're long, English poems. And uh, you have already a lot of pressure. You have other things to say, but you have to learn one poem out of the six poems, which is a trick of making you learn six, six poems them, yes. because you don't know what the panel is going to ask. So they would pick one randomly, and wow. you have to recite this for your grades, for your yeah. marks. Wow. And then this is when so I was doing poetry, I was mm. doing dance. Uh, also, drama was compulsory. Mm -hmm. So you go into different houses. You're like cobs or lions or leopards. You have like a drama competition. So you have to learn all these Shakespeare plays. I mean, it was intensive. And you enjoyed it. it you was, enjoyed it, that time. You enjoyed it, but at the same time, mm. it was very, like, very stressful in a way that you had to work hard. It was Who are some of the people that, your contemporaries, the people that were in the same school mm -hmm. around that time? Who are they, if you remember them? Uh, some, like, they're all over the world. Uh. <laughs> uh, there's uh, Monica. She's now in Maryland. She works with IT staff mm -hmm. in, in U.S. Um, I mean, some of the radio people in Kampala, I know some of them were there as well. Uh, remind me, because I uh, know. I think Shanice went yes, to. Shanice yes, went, yes. Was yes. it around the same time? Yes, different, uh, different. Okay. Also, the member of parliament, I think she was there. Kadaga was. Kadaga like, was also uh, in there. But she was ahead for, of us. Yeah. Yes, ahead of you. Uh, Robert. Mm. Mukori was, I think, a news editor for yes, New Vision. I remember Robert as that well. one was funny. That guy was mm -hmm. really interesting. Mm -hmm. I, when I see him, like editing, I'm like, Robert, mm -hmm. <laughs> are you the guy who used to like really be very? Because Robert was oh. also an official, and this this school had a, an, a cabinet. Mm. They would choose officials. They would elect <laughs> officials. There was a cabinet run by students. The whole government. There, uh, there was a whole entire government deep in a <laughs> village somewhere in Busoga. Mm. And, you, and uh, the whole school was run by this cabinet. Well, they are really strict because if they didn't do their duty, they were arrested for not doing their duty. You know, and it's incredible. You mentioned deep down in the village because indeed that school is hey. deep, very far away from development. Every, I everything. I went there. It's deep 
down very far away. And, and what really always, what this school really always, <laughs> the, the kind of memory I always remember, if you try to escape to go and get grab from home, they call it a French exit. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> that uh, French exit earned you like 30 good sticks. So <laughs> it was really far. Like yeah. even living was just a nice good exit like, to another country that is not even <laughs> like ne next. To your oh, so village. then talk, talk to us about living. That was graduating so from I did dance. School. I did dance. I did. I was cast in a lot of major production. The school also had a mm. culture to always produce one major production that would be brought to the national theater. Mm. To get into this production, you had to deliver, and we all wanted to get into this production because it would be a chance to go and buy a loaf of bread oh and a packet of biscuits and mm. go back to our village. <laughs> <laughs> you always look forward to an opportunity. Yeah, just 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 and and of course, they are not going to pay you perform. But, but at least and your parents, if you are lucky and your parents come to <laughs> see the show, which this show is really sold, like yeah. they are very popular in Kampala. Namasagali performance yes. in Kampala. I never attended them, but I heard about Everybody them. would go to these performances. Yeah. So that would get a chance to get you one kilo of sugar, mm. two kilos of fried mm. groundnuts, and you go home, you go back to our village. Mm. Yeah, so I was in this production, so I was introduced to theater early in my secondary school. So I was singing, I was dancing, but I was more known for dance. So I did a lot of dance. So when we finished my, our senior six, everything we, had, we needed to apply to university and all that, and I was still like, you know what, I want to become an artist. R regardless, my heart really went into this. And uh, even if people around me wanted me to be a lawyer or that, I didn't see myself in a courtroom. Honestly, no, not me. Because uh. I'll just forgive everyone and <laughs> <laughs> them go home. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, uh, I just ended up applying for music, dance, and drama. Uh. And uh, I didn't want to specialize in dance, so I specialized in drama because I danced for six years. Yeah. But I was going to use it as a minor to support my other productions. So in Macquarie University, that's why I ended doing uh, music, dance, and drama, and my area specialization was theatre for development. Mm. And here you're trained to identify gaps in communities and mm. respond to those gaps in communities. Let us take a short break, because now I want us to come back to that. Theatre for development. For development. Yeah. You're watching The Real Talk. Thank you so much for making time. And please do share the link. We are live on YouTube as well, Rwanda TV. Share that link so that we have as many people as possible catching this conversation. We've had about Hope's time as a child in secondary school. And now we're moving up to theatre for development. What does that mean and what did she do when she got into that space? As we move on with this conversation, we'll get to know about Mashirika and we'll get to know more about Umumunu Arts Festival. There's an annual festival. We will discuss what this year's festival is going to look like. You stay with us. Welcome back to The Real Talk. My name is Jackie and our guest is Hope Azeda, the phenomenal <laughs> Hope Azeda. <laughs> Hope you've done amazing things. And I'm now just sitting with you and listening to your story. I know where it's all coming from. This is a culmination mm -hmm. of a lot of work that was done at a young age. Mm -hmm. So you go to university and you major in theatre for development. Yeah, yeah. At that young age, mm -hmm. what did theatre for development mean to you? And now yeah. moving on, by the time you're graduating and going to the workspace, mm -hmm. how did you put it to work? So theater for development at that age for me meant that I am being uh, trained to identify gaps in communities and uh, or cracks in life. And uh, what I've been doing in Namasagari, I saw how this theater or performance was helping. Someone comes really, they can hardly even stand in front of people and by the time you finish six years, you're already like them. Like this is also another crack in life. Why, what kills our confidence? What robs our freedom? What robs our innocence? So this kind of, this kind of childhood question started coming up. And I was like, okay, it was not a very cool kind of lesson because you're, you're pushed to go to a village with issues. If, uh, if there's a hunger epidemic somewhere or there's a disease, you're, you're, you're sent there to see what causes this problem in this community if they have jiggers like for if they have poverty what is what is it if they have policies they are not understanding and they're always in trouble if they have an, an alcohol problem what causes this man to always drink himself off what else can this man be done is it because it's not understood is it a channel for him to you know to cry because our culture mm -hmm. well. so these this questions didn't really I didn't have an answer I needed to just understand what creates gaps, what creates cracks in our lives. And for me, that, that urge 
pushed me to understand, what pushed me to do this subject, regardless of other things we are doing. So I specialize in this, but now, as I was finishing my, 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 my course, that's when Rwanda was really at the top of my agenda. I was okay. like, what is this in my country? What, what happens that people can kill each other like this? I didn't understand it. And you know, having grown up in Amin's regime, we became like very used to this, became like, okay, it's another war, and we're doing all this. But also my country, I wanted to know exactly, and okay. what is it that brought that crack? Because once a crack is not sealed, it gets deeper it and has. deeper and deeper, and before we know, it, um, it erupts into an vo a volcano that we see. Mm. So how do we close how these gaps? How do we seal it before? Yeah, how, do yeah. we see, how do we prevent these cracks in our souls, in our bodies, in our communities? Because it all starts with us as individuals. Mm. And what do we need to close these gaps? Do we even have enough, <laughs> enough capacity to close this? Because so for me, that's why it started my research work. So we'd go in the village, do research, and try to you know, engage the villagers into this conversation, and we create characters of play that they have created themselves. And then we take back these productions to them. And then by the time this production, they, see, they laugh, but they actually they're laughing at their own situation, but at the same time seeking solutions to the issue they are facing. For me, that I felt like that would help. But I didn't know that again, I was being prepared to come back to Rwanda. Mm. Naturally, it was just happening. And uh, by the time I finished my course, I'd written a play about uh, my country and my oh. main informer or my main advisor or mentor was my father. <laughs> and I had to engage him because I had seen him right since I was a child, him listening to things I don't understand on radio. And I wondered mm. what exactly is happened in Rwanda and whatever information he would give me you is what I would, him. yeah. So he was my number one um, advisor on my scripts. Mm. And uh, by the time I finished, I'd written a play called The Firestones of Sehutsitwa or Amashigaya Sehutsitwa, which was my thesis. It was one of the top plays in the university. And that was my entry to this country. Mm. Yeah. When you came back to the country, did you move with your parents and the rest of your siblings, or did you come alone? They all came in, in they all came in different categories. Okay. My brothers came around the nineties because they are part of the RPF movement. Okay. My parents came ninety five after the war. Mm -hmm. That's when they returned. Then for me I came later at uh, uh, around uh, 2000. Because you had to finish school. I had finished school, but I also need to, I didn't know how to start. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I start? My Kenya yeah. Rwanda is not very good. I don't <laughs> speak French. <laughs> so, you know, you, you're like, you're born into, you, you, you know where to find what you need, where you are born. Yeah. But at the, at the end of the day, the spirit of home was calling. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're married now and you've mm -hmm. got children. How yeah. differently are you raising your children compared to how you were brought up? Um, I'm almost doing the same as my mama did. I don't, ma I don't want what I'm going through to be their burden. I want them to know, first of all, our mom, God was, was first. I am teaching them to know God, number one. How many children do you have? I have two daughters in oh. university. Yeah. And uh, I have always told them, if whatever you're one. looking for in life, there's only one source, and that is God that will give it to you. You have God, you have it all. You have it all, because I tell them, I am your mother, I was just used as a gateway for you to come here, mm. but I didn't create you. I also have a creator. The same creator who created me is the same creator who created and he holds everything you're looking for. So I've been, I've been trying to keep them on that track mm. with all the uh, new age things happening. I'm like, that's why you need, and uh, mm. I, I must be, I'm thankful to God that the, on, the, on that track, regardless mm -hmm. of all the too much information about it's you know, what going on. Yes, yeah. and peer influence. So for me, I tell them everything they need, grades, their mm -hmm. destiny only is, it, it, it lies in the hands of God. Mm -hmm. And I also have to, I've been telling them we need to pray for the spirit of discernment. We need to know what is evil. Sometimes not everything that glitters is good. You mm -hmm. need to have that mind that reads things beyond what you're seeing with your normal eyes. Yeah. You need to have a heart that reads things. And uh, yeah, it's been really, really helpful keeping them on that track. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can really challenge you with questions. And you <laughs> yeah, that's why you pray to God for wisdom to know how to respond exactly. to them. Exactly. Yeah. You need to step in there. You, but uh, they know now when you're talking with them and he says, Amen, I'm like, that's it. Hallelujah. That's it. Just I stick love it. there. Yes. And uh, yeah, they know 
they know that disease or disruption or anxiety are voices they do not they do not have to give legal residence in their hearts mm -hmm. uh, they these are things these are energies that can you take talk them. to them about it oh yeah um, we talk. you can keep disease away yeah i'm like you know what if there's something telling you cannot to do that don't listen to that listen to the voice that is saying you can do it and that's yeah. all you need and mm. most importantly you're here again i tell them what my mom told me you're here to plant seeds of love peace and, and, and comfort and also encourage them what my mom who used to encourage me the, the, the power to forgive because mm. when you don't forgive and let go again you're holding other energies in you that you don't need yeah. you need to just forgive and it's and not forgiveness good. is what we stand up for uh, even uh, as a country uh, exactly yeah. and forgiving is not for the person who wronged you it is for you because you're cutting a relationship with what that uh, whatever door that heart could have brought so Fantastic. you need to forgive regardless so this is where the, and sometimes they're like it's impossible how this is why i'm like yeah it is now you say the other word yes it's possible like don't say it's so impossible I'm, I'm, I'm also teaching them <laughs> to to say words and also teaching them to learn the power of words That's and good. what words can create around you mm. and uh, so every time they say oh i woke up and this math is i'm like what did you just say uh -huh. just say the other opposite <laughs> i woke up and this math is good <laughs> because they're both doing math <laughs> yes. i'm like I mean, this math is i'm just going to <laughs> conquer them and this thing i'm just winning it and that spirit is uh, it's so funny when they're about to lament and you know you cut them so short. Like, ah, what did you just say <laughs> So it is I a game. That. Yeah, 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 I mean, it is, yeah, just, it is just, it is just, it is just, it takes another energy to be in darkness and you yeah. say there's no darkness when you're seeing it. <laughs> you say, no, there's light. Yeah. <laughs> They're really blessed to have you as a mother that is bringing them up. We had a guest last week, Fola, and Fola spoke really highly about you, Hope. Mm -hmm. You know, the work you're doing with Masharika. Mm -hmm. But my question is, so at what point did you say, we have a good thing going on in Rwanda, we have a good country, we have good people, and I need the world to know that the place that I call home is a beautiful home. Because Mashirika, what mm -hmm. it has grown into is a, get, a door that brings people into this country. It's interesting, even I started saying this even before I came to Rwanda. Because I grew up, uh, we had uh, a cousin who used to live here, uh, unfortunately, most of uh, her family members all were killed during the Rwandan genocide against Tutsi. But she, used to, she, was, she was quite dominant. She's now a, 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 a Catholic sister. Mm -hmm. So she used to tell us how beautiful this country is. She used to tell us it's like paradise. You know, when she would visit us in Uganda, she would say, your food, you, know, you need to like start learning how to cook good food. I'm like, wow. So, <laughs> And she would tell us about this country. She would really describe it in, bit like in a very, very beautiful way. Mm. I'm like, wow, I can't wait to come to this, uh, this country called home. And uh, the, all the slogans, the land of milk and honey, the land of where, where, where God comes to sleep. Uh -huh. As a child, I mean, you absorb this as a sponge. It comes. I'm like, so me, I knew only good things. Then, I was, then this crack into this good thing came of genocide. And mm. I was like, what? How can, why does always beauty attract evil? For me, this is what I was asking myself. And so when I came here, regardless of what was going on, there was a spirit of love, there was a spirit of resilience, there was just a spirit of like, you know, of, 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 uh, of survival and hope. And for me, that was the spirit that was, for me, that was the guiding light guiding light to the, the spirit to survive regardless the, the spirit to go on the spirit to say you know what whatever happened is not going to define me yeah. so as wherever i go i tell people have you been to rwanda <laughs> <laughs> you need to come to rwanda yes. so wherever i go oh you have a good president oh, i'm like come come, 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 come see. see more <laughs> come we don't only have the president we yeah. have much more oh, yes come. exactly the, the <laughs> land the what you know is that talking about Culture. these things yeah, exactly. So it has always it stayed with me. So wherever I go, I tell people this. And uh, and then now your theatre for development exactly led you yeah. to the decision to use theatre exactly to exactly. reconstruct. And you yeah. said this to me before, yeah. and even in several other conversations, to reconstruct yeah. what was destroyed. Exactly. So that revelation, yeah. that motivation. Yeah. If you can speak to us about that moment exactly. when the light shone on you mm -hmm. and said, Hope, you're going to be the vessel. 
you know what? This is how God wires people. Honestly, I was not like, go, I didn't know where was, this was going to end, but I, for, I followed and listened to the child in me because the child in me was allowed to play. The child in me wanted love. The child in me wanted comfort, and that's what I wished for everyone. So after I'd done for theater for development and written the play about unity, people thought I was crazy. So people can never, ever, ever, ever like unite or forgive or whatever. Even, that's like a far-fetched wish. Like just, but it was, I, and as a child, I was like, why not? If love exists and hate exists, why can't one win the other? Yeah. If you learn to hate, why can't you, why, why can why you, can't you learn to, to love? love? Yeah. You know, if you can forgive, why cannot someone else forgive? You know, for me, I still saw there was a chance regardless, regardless because you know, where there is a will, there's a, there's a way. So for me, I came with that spirit. I was like, okay, let's talk about reconciliation. What, what is it divides us again? And nobody could explain anything to me. They said, okay, they came, they gave us labels, tutti, wood. I'm like, so? Mm. One person has a nose, and I'm like, well, we have a big nose. So uh -huh. What is the problem? This one is, there's nothing that could justify a child being hunted by a man. It was just an ideology. And for me, I think that ideology, we needed to uproot the ideology and its roots. And from that, I still had faith and hope that at the end of the day, Rwandans will live again together. Mm -hmm. And we will be um, a lesson to other countries that, you know, there's forgiveness regardless. There's beauty in every horror if there's a will to look for it. There is, there is, there is survival beyond, uh, you know, there is thriving to survive. There is that energy. So there's... Really, this country for me has been a school, and I want oh, everyone God. I love or meet or come uh, have an encounter with it to come and enjoy Just this come and school. Because mm. <laughs> it's not only been a home, it's been a school of humanity. Just seeing someone forgive another who did unimaginable things to, and people have the, the yeah. courage to forgive, but I'd seen this courage to forgive again way back in my mother's way because yeah. she went through a lot. There's a time they wanted to kill to all her children in a refugee camp. They poisoned, like, the target was to poison. But at the end of the day, she forgave these people. I'm like, how? Uh, but that how, for me, I'd already seen it. If you can forgive, for, forgive is, is a benefit to all. Uh, Forgiveness liberates us. And uh, for me, I think this is the thing people want to question, Rwanda, how is this possible? And this is the beauty, this, this, this ability to even have this conversation is what I yeah. keep telling people, come and see, come. Because yeah, people are hurting outside, people are living in, a f in, in, in situations where their, their, their generational angers have you know, taken over their spirits, they've taken over their, their lives, and someone is, has an they're anger. They're in a dark place because they're not letting go. Yeah, because th someone has an anger that is 500 years old. Yeah. You meet someone and say, oh, my ancestors were dead. I'm like, what? Oh, ancestors, you're really? 23, you're 25, uh. and you're talking about which land of yours was taken? <laughs> <laughs> and you're hung you, you get. <laughs> and you're living an Who's anger. Who's that you're And crying? your great, great <laughs> grandfather's spirit, uh, spirit of anger is shifting and shifting, and now it is dwelling in your heart. You need to let go. You need to let go. Why are you angry? At who? <laughs> what have they yeah. done? And then the people they are angry at, they are not even there. Was it easy for you to get people to work with on this journey? It, it was a bit difficult because oh. it was a new space for me, a new area for me. But I found it more easy. I found it easier to work with young people just because the, some of them didn't really care about what happened because they didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. I find it more difficult with the adults. The older because generation. They, they are ex experts of the past. Yeah. And uh, every time we started working on something, they were, they were drawn or drenched or they got, they got drowned into the past and we are looking for how to move forward and to the extent that they didn't even see it happening, like there's uh, no moving forward. I'm like, <laughs> but young people mm -hmm. are just like, they didn't care. Oh, well, my dad was this. Uh, we was so already moving together with young people. So mm -hmm. therefore, finding, uh, young people with an energy to move forward, but at the same time going back to learn from the elders mm -hmm. is where I, I was in between those two categories of people. Mm. We didn't drop the elders completely because we needed the knowledge. We needed them, yeah. yeah we needed the, the knowledge, but at the same time I needed to see what else we can feed these young people because whatever mm. you feed them is what they take. Yeah. Now it is even more challenging with social media. Why do you feed them whatever you feed them in your house? They're also being fed other things on social media. Mm. So 
it was not easy, but uh, with art, it makes it easy in a way because art is, has the power to unlock conversations. Art has power to create safe spaces. Art has the power to build someone, to, uh, to, to help them reclaim the person they have left, to understand that, you know what, this is who I am. So it, it, art has the power to build confidence. So people love to these kind of things. Mm. Yeah, to, to be in a place where they can commit, com <laughs> where they can do mistakes and no one says you did a mistake. That mistake <laughs> is creativity. Where they learn from their mistakes. Yes, yeah. mm. And so the art that you're talking about has won you awards, mm. recognition, mentions, like globally. You know, mm. it started yeah. small mm. in Rwanda, went East Africa, mm. continental, mm. globally. Mm -hmm. What is the, of all this, which one is the most outstanding? Which one will you say this mention? This award meant this to me. I think the most one was the McNaught Prize because I could not believe that out of all the submissions done, and I did not even nominate myself, we were, we were four people around the globe, one from Australia, one from US, then me. And uh, out of all these are three men and one woman. And I was just one woman in these four. And I was like, what is this? And they're all doing amazing things. I'm like, what did I do to even come to this level? So for me, it was a moment to just believe in myself and understand mm -hmm. that I didn't waste my time. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's someone somewhere mm -hmm. out there who will always appreciate what you do, who mm -hmm. recognize what you do. And while I was still thinking I've done nothing, here people think you have done something. Yes. And wow. Mm -hmm. I was humbled, honestly. Mm. I couldn't stop crying in my room when I was in New York to receive this award. Oh. I was asking myself, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish <laughs> my mom was here to see this because yeah. I got the same award when I'd lost my mom. Because oh, I got sorry. the award, I think, around in August, but my mom left around June. So mm, that was sad. Yeah, my emotions. dad was not there. I wish my dad was even there to see what, <laughs> what, what, what. <laughs> But uh, I know yeah. uh, everything has its chapter every li every exactly. in life. Exactly. Everything happens for yeah. a reason. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for me, that uh, I was like, what? Yeah. No way. How come? <laughs> yeah. Mm. And an award that, as you said, you yeah. don't know who nominated you. No. You mm. never mm. mobilized in any way. Yeah. But it also yeah. it was also a a wake-up call for me to even share with my friends. Just do what you need to do. Yes. Do good and you reap good. Just do good. Yeah. And plant love, you reap watching, love. Yeah. Plant peace, you reap, you reap peace. peace. Yeah, because true. it's what you have that you can be able to share. If you have yeah. violence, you share violence. If you have peace, you share. So Correct. if you're constantly feeding yourself with that, it's good. Correct. Mm. We'll shortly be looking at uh, Hope's six cues. Before that, mm. it's 30 years since the genocide against the Tutsi. But it's also 10 years of uh, Mashirika. Yeah, and of Ubumunu. Of, Arts, sorry, of Ubumunu, Ubumunu Arts, Arts Festival. Festival yeah. So if you can just talk to us about the journey of Ubumunu mm -hmm. Arts Festival and share with us what we can expect this year. Hey, wow, <laughs> it's, it's very exciting. It's very exciting because for once the festival is going to be 10, 10 days uh, reflecting our 10 it's years. It's only three days. Yeah, it's been three so days, and that was also not easy. Three <laughs> days of a festival. Oops, it's and hard. And how are you going to do 10? How will you even manage it? You know, you follow the face of a child. The same thing. We will get there. Just Gosh. claim it, pursue it, and say <laughs> it's going to be a good 10 days. Wow. It's going to be a magnificent experience. Ten days. Not okay. only for us as Rwandans, but for the whole world. Mm. And as we are still planning this we are we have partnered with Kigali genocide memorial so they are mm. also going to be commemorating 20 years wow. so the 10 days is going to be in partnership with Kigali genocide memorial and there's oh. an amazing yeah hold on home mm. it's mm. 10 years of Ubumunu arts festival and, yeah 20 years exactly of the genocide memorial yeah and 30 years, yes. Kuibuka. Yes. Oh, wow. Tell me, who, who, who wrote 20. that script? Somebody wrote the script, you don't know who. Uh, why is it like that? I don't even know. Like, no wonder the 10 days. It was meant to be. Yeah. It was yeah. meant to be, yeah. Yeah, so the 10 days is going to be really amazing, really oh. amazing in terms of the first three weekends. We're going to be really having amazing performances. And this mm -hmm. time we are bringing the, 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 the nuggets, the golden nuggets from the past experiences, the past wow. editions. So bringing amazing productions back again that mm -hmm. we are here maybe 
six years ago, two years ago, they're coming back. Okay. The, the productions that the audience really loved, we are bringing them back. Mm -hmm. But in, and then in between the three days, to the, the last three days that we are doing a conference with the Kigali Genocide Memorial, uh, in those, we're going to dedicate all, every day to something I feel like is a crack in our communities and we need to talk about it. Okay. We are going to be really like engaging young people to talk about mental health in partnership with Solid Minds. And uh, we're also going to be talking about AI, for example, like I don't, <laughs> you gave me like a, a one simple question about what is AI, <laughs> honestly. I know very little about but it. But it has, sneaked, well. it has mm. sneaked in our lives and we need to go back to what we talked about, art meets technology mm. and bring stories of home to life. And how is this keeping us balanced as humans? but at the same time embracing the robotic life that is coming into our lives. Mm. Then the other thing we're going to talk about is the climate justice. Uh, it is something personally I also don't understand and would love to learn. And we are partnering mm. with different organizations that have really advanced in these kind of conversations because what is climate justice? You know, That's when you tell me to recycle a cup, I've washed one cup since I was, when we were young in a village, it was the same cup we washed. So yeah. how, why am yeah. I being taught again to wash another cup? Exactly. You know, so the recycling thing, we need to know, how, 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 what is how that? How does it work? Yeah. Who are you see the, using and throwing away? Exactly. Yeah. So sometimes the slogans or, in, or, or, or or things that come into this world and we, we follow slogans but we don't really unpack these slogans mm. and we just want to unpack more the meaning behind these slogans. What is art meets technology? What mm. is so you're going mental to break health? That down for us. What is, is mental health? What is uh, climate justice? And then that we, we roll back into the last days which are amazing with a conference, a global conference on uh, leading and uh, uh, and the art of listen and the science of listening. Mm. Uh, it's going to be really amazing, and uh, they're, they're, they're inviting amazing people from across the globe, and wow. uh, we will be feeding them into our festival at the end of the day, every day of the conference. Okay, where can we find that? Leading up to it, as you get prepared, where can our viewer find the information? Okay, so to keep we up are still date? managing all the information, but we have our <laughs> websites already out there. Mm. We have, they can visit our website, and they yeah. can also visit the Kigali Genocide Memorial. Mm -hmm. I'm sure like uh, in a month's time, everything will just be out there Fantastic. for the different links. I'm excited. It's overwhelming, me but too, again, I'm just too. trying to breathe and say it's going to be great. It's it going to be life changing. You've never gone wrong. No, I mean, when you <laughs> claim good things, you just attract that energy. <laughs> Let us get to know Hope's six cues. <laughs>uh, writing poetry. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh my god. But it, and it could easily be work again. Yeah, yeah but it's uh, work, but it's my escape. It's, pleasure. it's my escape to <laughs> engaging my brain. <laughs> uh -huh. What does friendship mean to you? Uh, friendship is uh, that, that moment when you're able to have a pick me up moment for everyone, whatever time, at whatever. There's no like schedule around being a friend. You're a friend whenever I need you. Yeah. At midnight, in the storm, in the eyes of the storm, you're there. So yeah. as friends for me, that person who, friendship for me is a pick me up moment yeah. experience. Okay, and one that has no time. Mm. What is that thing that people don't know about you? Let's make them know. They don't know that I'm a spiritual warrior. You see. <laughs> <laughs> that I, Right. Prayer warriors. Prayer, prayer. Prayer. Nobody you knows that. Stand in the gap yeah, for us. Because I've never been on the street saying hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> you see? Yeah, I'm a Here prayer warrior are. and I love it. I love engaging wow. with the Holy Spirit and just, you know, flying mm. to other dimensions for mm. me. I love it. Fine. Mm. And then what is, the, what is heavy on your heart about artists and yeah. art generally? Uh, what is heavy on my heart is really the mental health breakdown. The mental health breakdown and... Uh, I'm just hoping that as artists, we are supportive to each other. The community can understand that artists are going through a lot. Because you're living in a, you, 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 you have a job that you don't have a monthly payment. Yeah. And you're just waiting for an opportunity. And uh, 
yeah, it's just from that. And, and, and for me, it's just a mental health breakdown that is really surrounding and lingering around artists. And I just pray to God that it, it may not define who they are. They may just like expel, yeah. expel this. And let them find a way of supporting each other. Yeah. And lastly, what would you say to the younger Hope? 20 year old Hope Azeda. Yeah, the younger hope should stay authentic. Again, see God. <laughs> that one, you, yeah, that one keeps coming back. Mm. Stay authentic, but um, uh, endeavor to plant seeds of humanity. But well, what you plant is what you reap. L yeah, uh, and also learn not to be. Um, n n let history not be. Um, an assignment, mm -hmm. you know, but, but, but pick what you need to pick and let, let it not define you. But uh, really, honestly, walk in, walk in the right path. Stay away from right. trouble. Yeah. Stay away from trouble. Do good. Be just, just give love and, and just don't uh, stick to grudges mm -hmm. and, and let those grudges like grind you and stain your heart and you're like always, you know. And uh, also not to compare yourself to anyone. We are all a different color. We are created with a different color. And you are, uh, uh, we, are, we are supposed to bring that color on, on this universe, to, to plant this color, to, to add it in our communities. So there's nobody like hope. Mm, there's nobody like, yeah. yeah Jack, is Jackie, hope is, ho Jack is Jack and hope is hope. Yeah. So there's no point of comparing yourself to others. Listen to who you're supposed to be. Work hard, pray hard. And uh, do good, in most do good, plant goodness. And when you plant goodness, goodness defines you. And that's all you always have to give. If you ever have to choose, yeah. choose good. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Well yeah. said. Thank you. Thank you, Hope. Thank you. This Thank has you been for amazing. Having me. Thank you. My pleasure. And we do hope to have you back yes. soon. <laughs> <laughs> what an honor to be able to tell Hope's story. She's phenomenal, has done amazing things in the art space. and. What she's done and continues to do is just teaching us that art can be used to bring something good out of humanity, something mm. good out of every one of us. Seek that gift, know what gift you have, mm. and use it to do good. In case you know somebody who missed this story, please share with them the YouTube links that they can watch the conversation. Check out their website and you will get to know as time goes by what you need to know. The tickets, are, it's always free interest. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but when we get there, in fact, we will have hope back when that time draws close. My name is Jackie Lumbasi. It has been a pleasure having a conversation with Hope Azeda, the founder of Mashirika Arts. And she's a playwright, she's a director, and so much more. Always a pleasure to have you with us. God bless you.